Okay, John here. Um, I'm going to point out this curve. This is a two cell, or a two plate cell. And you can see that this curve does not follow the normal battery discharge curve. Because a normal battery discharge curve would come down, run along flat, and then go down like this. So this is nothing like a lead acid battery. And uh, I'm going to take this cell to 1.2 volts. I'm going to give you the exact time. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 143 minutes. Okay? And that's been the current the whole time. And this is the two plate cell. You can see that it dispelled the water in there. And uh, we've changed the mixture around a little bit on this crystal to give it more power density with two plates. And so far it's working. And uh, I'm going to let this run down. So you got quite a while, and I'll be back when it gets down a little bit lower so you can see. And once again, I'm going to say to you, a lead acid battery comes down from its standing voltage, stays flat about out to the end, and then goes like that and dies. This does not do that. This keeps giving you power all the way along the linear curve, right down. And it charges the same way, up like that and then flat. So once the chemical is saturated, the charging would be up on a linear curve, steeper than this. And then it would flatten out. And then going any further out on that flat curve is not really buying you anything because the chemical is saturated. So you can put milliamps into it, or you can put amps into it. It's You're just going to boil the battery away, and you're just wasting the energy. So once you get it up on the curve, then maybe 10 or 15 minutes after that reaches the plateau and flattens out would be where you want to charge at. So we've got quite a ways to go here. I'll be back. Okay, one more thing that I want to do to clarify the charge curve on this cell is you're going to go up linear and then you're going to reach a plateau and that plateau is going to extend out until you see the cell bubble at that point in time the chemical is saturated and can't really hold anymore and you'll notice that by the water will suck in and every once in a while you'll see a gas bubble come up in the cell. You can see the water right now in there. And so uh, I just want to make, make that very clear that if you're going to build one of these then follow the procedure that I've talked about with the elm. And uh, you can work this formula out. This formula is not uh, what everybody suspects it is. There's no baking soda involved. There's no vinegar involved. There's no oil involved. They're just, it's just ammonium aluminum silicate that's gelled. And then, uh, I want it, want it to go down, but it's, it's going to take its sweet time, so I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and this has been uh, 180 minutes now. Going on, counting down six more minutes. I'm going to take it to 200, I think, or just a little past it. I want to show you what this power curve does. So it starts off here, it goes down linear, supplying power all this time, and still continuing to supply power. And normally, uh, a regular battery 
would would come down like this and then fall off like that. This doesn't do that. This is sort of linear all the way down with an extended power range all the way down no matter what the load is. just doesn't fall flat on its face. And uh, of course the uh, motor is still going and the current is now at 132 milliamps and the cell is absolutely cold. You can see the water now in it. And then uh, I'll try to set up a charge curve so we can see that. I'll be back. Okay, John back. Okay, so we're now at 1.24 volts and then I'll give you the time at the end. I'm going to show you something here. Um, this is a miniaturized scalar Tesla switch right here and you can see the current that it's doing in the panel it says on the back nine tenths of an amp and so uh, what we're doing here is we're testing we're testing the solar panels so uh, we have a little four panel there testing on the elm cell but unfortunately that one's in the cup and is drying out in this with the heat. It's nice and warm today here. To give you a, a view of what's, what's around. We're at the airport. So i just give you a view around. Show you we're in an industrial. This is a, the new armory they built. Nobody's in it. Um, and of course they've sprayed the sky. So we're down on light. Anyway, I wanted to show you that. I'll be back. Apparently so anyway, if uh, Chuck goes and gets a meter, we'll show you where this Elm battery is sitting with the Tesla switch. Once again, that's the switch. And uh, we can change any rate we want on it, make the panel do anything we want by load. And so Chuck went and got a meter and he's going to measure this battery for you. That's where it has it. And it's going to continue that. And of course it regulates itself, the switch, as it comes down. It goes to low light. But actually, go stand in front of the panel for a minute, Chuck. And uh, we'll show you here that it continues to charge. Okay, see it here? Now give it just a little light. It's still continuing to double the voltage and put it here in one tenth of an amp, see? So it works in low light condition. Anyway, I wanted you to see that. We're now at the NICAD level. And we're going to run this out and we'll be back. So anyway, what I've done now is I've taken this sound battery that we made from that 1950s series. And uh, you can see the switch here now. So it's almost two amps at the peak. Close. And uh, where's the voltage going on that? Okay, so it's gonna bring it up. Remember, this is a much bigger battery. And it's going to continue that with that little one amp panel. And there it just hit 12, see? And it's going to keep doing that until it gets up. I'll be back. Okay, here's the curve. We're at 1.06. And you can see that it's linear just about. 
all the way down, continuing to supply power all the way down with the motor still running at exactly 120 milliamps, which is about the same as the SG. Now, this L battery here that we formed on a video, the uh, Tesla switch is nice and gentle, pulses nice and gentle with it as it switches things around. And uh, of course my son has changed position out there and you can see this is where this battery is now. So anyway, I'm going to let this run out because I want you to show you the end of the curve. Okay, back with the power curve and you can see we're right here right now. Uh, linear almost all the way down. Linear of course would go like that and that's what it's going to do. Um, except that the cell has impedance shifts as it goes down here. And um, it's been 260 minutes. So Chuck says almost four hours continuous at a and if I average this if I average this scale it's been doing about 140 milliamps continuous for four hours on this motor that doesn't give anything back of course the Tesla charger has the battery here now and then I'll come back and charge this cell with the Tesla charger okay let's count the time we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, almost fifteen. And we're now at nine point nine. So uh we're at three hundred minutes now. Almost exactly at 300 minutes, continuing at 110 milliamps. So I would say that at a half a volt, I would stop this cell. All right, so I'm not that far off. So I think I'll just let this continue, and I'll let this recovery. So you can see the recovery rate, but it's linear all the way down with the power curve. There are three important things here. Your first impedance shift is right here, your second one is here, and your third one is here in the cell. So, you know, we're going to play close attention to that, and I'm going to come back and hook it to the Tesla charger so you can see it charge. Motor, and you can see the, re the recovery. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute, and then I'll come back and hook it to the charge. And that was the last 10 minutes, so we're doing okay. So if you can see right here, it's bounced up to right here. So now we'll put it on the charger. Be right back. Okay, we are now hitting it with the Tesla charger, and that's off the 12 volt panel. You can see what the battery's doing here. And you can see what's actually happening here. So we'll give it a little time. And there's the current in the pulse. So, solar panel's doing its job, switch is doing its job, and meters don't lie. And neither do graphs. This spike you see right here is when I disconnected, but if you watch this meter real close, you can see what it's doing. And you can see that the cell is not boiling, it's not hot, it's at room temperature. And we'll be back to show you where this goes and where this goes in the charge. We'll be back. Okay, it's approximately been 10 minutes. And uh, you can see it's just starting to come up on the curve right now. Of course, the meters with the Tesla switch do kind of funny things. They don't like this negative, the way the switch 
goes off and then goes negative and comes back positive. So you're getting this in here. It's like an oscillation. But that's not affecting the charging. It's, it's doing exactly as predicted here. And now it's going to flatten out somewhere and come this way. Come back and show you that. But meanwhile, the switch is still doing what it's supposed to do. And you don't see, you see the water that's now absorbing back into the crystal. And you don't see any gassing because it's just saturating the chemical right now. It's almost at the end of the curve here. And so it's a linear climb, just about straight up. And then uh, it'll flatten out. And I'll be back. Okay, I want to point this out to you. This is still climbing in voltage, so the chemical has not absorbed all the charge yet. So the minute that stops and then flattens out, this cell will be pretty close to being charged. But you can see that it's pushed it up to beyond, just beyond the 2 volt level here. So we're going to watch. Okay, I've approximately given it about 25 minutes here. And you can see the chemical just went shot right up and then over potentialized here. And now I'm just letting it settle down to its standing voltage. And then I'll test it for load. Be back. Okay, we're right back at our 162 milliamps. And you can see here that it brought it down to about the same level, uh, about right here. And uh, it's now pretty much charged, so we have a ways to go. And uh, I just wanted you to see that. just wanted to point this out to you. And I wanted you to see the charge versus the discharge. And, uh, of course, like Chuck says, this is over four hours. So, we'll see where this goes. I mean, it's got to settle in and sit somewhere. So, we'll see where our charge is. Thanks for watching.